Welcome to another Sew Along With Me tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to make these two-tone drawstring bags. Are they cute? And if you want to make the same exact one I have here, check out my Etsy shop. Links in the description down below. Each kit, you will be able to make three different size of each drawstring bag pattern. And the one I'm making today will be this one. And if you don't have any of my kits, that's fine. Don't worry. Come and join me anyway and learn how to make a simple two-tone line drawstring bag. Welcome to day one. Day one will cover the exterior panels and the interior panels. When you unbox my kits, there will be three sets of this exact same layout with a different color pattern, of course. I'm making a medium today. The instructions are the same for either a large, mediums, or small. Any piece I mentioned here with the identifications that links to the instruction booklets will be for the medium. What day of the week do you usually sew? I like to do my projects one day at a time. So I usually start Monday and kind of try to aim to finish it by the weekend. Or if I start a weekend project, I will try to finish by Sunday. The thread I will be using is an all-purpose polyester thread. I can't remember the exact weight of this thread, but I believe it's a size 50 or 60. The sewing foot I will be using today is a straight stitch foot. For needle, you will need two different sizes. Since we are also using quilting cotton for the lining, we will need a size 80, 11. And since we are using cotton canvas, we will need 116. Grab one of the A3 and then the A4 as well. Take your A4 and put on A3, right side together like this. Align it along the edge. One thing to know, if you have a directional print pattern, make sure you face it this way. This will be the top of the pouch and this will be the bottom of the pouch. Take this to the sewing machines and sew a line across at one fourth inch seam allowance. This is a really bad habit of mine. One thing I forgot to mention is make sure you secure it in place before you sew. I keep forgetting to do that because this piece is actually very small. So if you do many of these at once, you don't really need to secure them in place first. But if you're a new beginner, please secure them in place first before you sew to prevent the fabric from slipping sideways when you sew. For me, I had done this back so many times, so I'm just gonna sew like this. If there's any fabric fraying, you see like this one, avoid pulling it out. Try to trim it or leave it alone. Once we sew the pouch, those fraying will not be visible. So don't worry about it. And don't play with it because the more you pull the fraying out, the, you will lose more fabric inches. I'm gonna cut this one because it's really bothering me. Take this panel and gently press on it and crease along this edge here. Then you're gonna take the other A3 and then you're gonna do the same thing, right side together. To brace the carrot in place and then sew it across with one fourth inch seam allowance. If you have a directional print pattern, this will be the top of your pouch. This will be the bottom of your pouch. So make sure your fabric directions is going this way. Next, you want to unfold. Take your finger and lightly crease along this edge. Feel free to iron if you want to. I just think a drawstring pouch is meant for a lot of use. So I don't see it as the same as a crossbody bag or a backpack or a purse where all those crease matters versus here, it's just a pouch. So it doesn't really have to be perfect. Once you do that, I want to show you on the back side. Make sure you fold this seam that you saw right here towards A3 panels like this. The reason why 
we do it this way is because when you top stitch over here, which we will do next, you want the stitch to grab onto this little seam here. If you do it this way, your top stitch will hardly grab it and it will cause more bulkiness. So once you do that, then top stitch along here at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. There's a fraying piece here that really bothering me. You see that? <laughs> it's really bothering me. So I'm gonna give that a quick trim. Otherwise, everything else look good. I'm just gonna leave it as, and I'm gonna top stitch. Next, you wanna take this piece and fold it in half the best you can, aligning the top edges, the side, everything. Another tip I have is that you could also use this little seam here to align with the other side, like this. Lightly crease it once you're done aligning it and definitely secure it in place. This is the part I do not skip with securing it in place because if you don't, you can't get a perfect alignment on both sides. You can also mark the top center points of each panel so that it make your alignment a lot easier. I'll recommend that you put a clip here and a clip there as well. Now take this to the sewing machines and sew along the side at one half inch seam allowance. The tips I have here is because at the bottom here, we will box the corner later. I highly recommend that you backstitch here as well. Another tip I have is to start sewing at the bottom corner and then work your way towards the top of the pouch. That is because the seam here will naturally want to fall this way and your pressure foot will naturally glide on top of it. If you sew it the other way, your pressure foot might push it backwards and it will be hard for you. If you forget to backstitch at this corner like I just did because I was too busy showing you all the tips, cut extra thread here and just tie a couple knots. This will keep the thread from coming off. That should fix the issue of forgetting to backstitch there. Next, take your piece and a scissor. A small scissor like this will do. What you want to do is cut this little corner. You want to cut from the corner here all the way inward until you get to the stitches you just did. Avoid cutting the stitches. The reason I include this technique is because I find that it gives you a cleaner box corner. Now repeat on the other side. Once you trim that, now we're gonna take our fingers and kind of open the pouch. Kind of stretch it out. Try to stretch it out into it's like kind of straight. Then you're gonna open up the seam. Try to align the seam here against the stitches here. That will give you a better box corner. Now I usually check the corner on this side to see if they're aligned. If they're aligned, that means this side is aligned, so therefore you can then clip it in place. Next, you're gonna repeat the same thing for the other corner, then take to the sewing machines and sew a horizontal line across at one half inch seam allowance, and you're gonna do the same for the other corner as well. Your patch exterior panel is now done. I'm going to go ahead and turn this pouch right side out, even though that stuff is not needed for today. It's for tomorrow, but I'm just going to do it because I like looking at the pattern. Isn't that cute, you guys? This is so adorable. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that brown with this flower pattern is really pretty. The step to make the interior line is exactly the same as the exterior. And the only reason why this is a little different is because we're not adding a two-tone interior. So it's 
actually a lot easier. You can make any line drawstring pouch with just two pieces of rectangle like this. The reason why the exterior panel required a few additional steps was because we were trying to make it two-tone. But if you were making it one color or one pattern, it is very straightforward. And this is why I says this pouch is very easy to do. It's so easy. We're just gonna take this piece and then fold it in half. Align it somewhat well, or well enough for you. This is good enough for me. Secure in place. Drawstring pouch are like the easiest thing to make. I also gonna add clips to the top and bottom here to extra secure in place before sewing. Now take this to the sewing machine and sew a line across at one half inch seam allowance. I totally forgot to change out my needle. You can see that because I didn't use the right needle for this piece here, it caused a little puckering in my fabric. This is why I says it's very important that you need to change out your needle that matches the fabric you're sewing. Let's change out the needle now. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave my stitches as is and not redo them. As best practice, I highly recommend you change out your needle every time you switch the fabric. I'm gonna change to a size 8011 now, and I have to remind myself to make sure to change the needle back for the next steps. After you change the needle, another tip is sometimes you have to adjust your tension. For my sewing machine, I don't really need to adjust that much tension, so I just gonna go ahead and sew. Do you see the difference between the top and the bottom? The bottom is what we use size needle 8011 and the top is 116. See how needles could make a huge difference? Next, we're gonna trim this corner like how we did with the other one. Next, we're gonna box the corner like we did with the other one. Then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna sew across at one half inch seam allowance. I didn't have you guys leave a gap. And there is a reason for that. The reason for not leaving a gap when sewing earlier was because I learned based on my experience of making this pouch, by seam ripping after you sew to make the gap, the place where you put the drawstring later will be a lot cleaner. We're gonna seam rip a little opening on one side of the interior lining, it doesn't matter which side, we're gonna seam rip about two inches. If you don't have a seam ripper, you could definitely use a scissors like this, and you could pull the thread from this side and just kind of poke the sharp corner here into the, each of the stitches and kind of seam rip about two inches, roughly. I have a seam ripper, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. Are there any weird, uncommon, unconventional techniques you guys do to make bags? If you do, Leave me a comments down below. The gap that you're ripping doesn't have to be exactly at two inches. It just have to be big enough so that you can reach to turn the back right side out. Last time I make the Caroline crossbody bag, I didn't make a big enough gap. So this time I'm gonna make a little bigger. Hopefully I don't run into the same issue as last time. By the way, if you didn't watch my Caroline crossbody bag sew along tutorial, go check it out. It's a really good bag to make if you want to learn all the basic common bag making technique. And that is it for day one. We make somewhat of a pouch. And not only one, but two of them. Come back and join me tomorrow and learn how to assemble this bag and turn it into a line drawstring pouch. All right, I better see you tomorrow in class. No skipping class. Bye.